Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Thank you for joining me for another Star Wars Legends lore video. Before we begin, I want to give a brief shout out to the family Bovine. I'm featured in their most recent video, and let me just say, it is absolutely hilarious. Please guys, click the link which will be down in the description and in a pinned comment, and go give them some love. Anyway, in 6 ABY, the New Republic set its sights on recapturing Coruscant, a battle we actually covered a few days ago. After covertly landing on the planet, along with the rest of Rogue Squadron, Wedge Antilles was assigned with assessing the loyalty of Coruscant citizens. This was obviously a difficult task. How do you assess the zeitgeist of trillions of people? However, one way he planned to do so was by visiting the various Imperial facilities on the planet which were open to the populace, and conducting a sort of survey. This was his thought process. By learning what it was the Empire wanted its citizens to believe about the rebellion, he could then assess whether or not Imperial propaganda efforts were successful. One of the main locations they surveyed was the Galactic Museum, which provided a fascinating insight into the Imperial propaganda machine. So, the first two floors were designed to impress visitors with their magnificence, to show off the wealth of the Empire, and also lend some authority to the propaganda that the later floors would be spreading, including one that was entirely dedicated to the life of the Emperor, with holographic representations of people he knew singing his praises. However, it was the final area of that floor which really drove the propaganda home. It showed an image of the Emperor lying on a platform. However, he was not evil or disfigured as Sidious was by the time of his death, not oozing with evil and moral rot as Luke had described him, but rather young and more handsome. This is something we've also seen in Star Wars Rebels. The image was accompanied by a hologram of Vader, which stated, and I quote, Behold my master and weep. He has been stolen from us by those who embrace hatred. The Emperor learned that the Rebels had stolen plans for an Imperial planetary ore extractor and intended to use the one they were fabricating at Endor on inhabited planets. He assembled his fleet, and heedless of personal danger, he had me take him to Endor. He infiltrated the half-completed extractor, offering these rebels his forgiveness and a hand in friendship. They rejected him and attacked his fleet. My master had no alternative but to destroy this Death Star himself, perishing in the process so his citizens could live on. I was slain with him, but my death did not distress me, for it came in service to my master." Now obviously this is a complete fabrication of the truth. It basically says that Palpatine traveled to Endor to infiltrate the Death Star which was being constructed by the Rebel Alliance with the purpose of destroying a planet. I do find this somewhat strange, as we know the Tarkin Doctrine sort of encouraged ruling through fear and euphemizing the Death Star as an ore extractor sort of neuters its purpose somewhat. But anyway, as Vader was speaking, a falsified Battle of Endor is shown, which has a small Imperial fleet outgunned by a massive rebel formation. The Empire fights back, valiantly, pierces to the heart of the rebel fleet, but is overwhelmed. It then shows Palpatine, full of sorrow, regret, and sadness, destroying the battle station in a triumphant last stand, also taking out nearly the entire rebel fleet. Other floors in the museum were dedicated to the social and cultural developments of the Empire, or displays of the fauna and fora of the galaxy, even a repository of Sith artifacts. Unsurprisingly, even these floors were propaganda pieces. Native animals were said to have been made extinct by outlaws and malcontents, including Ewoks, who were made to look as cute as possible. So was this propaganda successful? Well, even Wedge during his tour said the following. The whole presentation had sent a shiver down his spine. He had been at Endor. He had fired the shot that had helped destroy the Death Star. Yet, this telling of the story felt as compelling to him as the true history of what had happened. It suggested a benign purpose for the Death Stars, and made the Rebels out to be monsters for thinking to use one on an inhabited planet. By doing so, and suggesting the Emperor had gone there to prevent that sort of perversion, the fear that lingered in everyone's heart concerning the destruction of Alderaan was shifted into fear directed at the Rebellion. However, Wedge also acknowledges that the Rebel fleet being demolished obviously is out of sync with reality. And that's the case largely. The Empire can talk the talk, but most of the time they choose not to walk the walk. 
or otherwise they don't have evidence to support their claims. And that's why it's almost certain that this propaganda was somewhat effective throughout the fairly prosperous and less held down core worlds, but outside of that, where the empire was more brutal, there's probably neither the resources or even possibility of keeping people so indoctrinated. As the rebels eventually invaded the planet, many citizens actually fled Coruscant, not only Imperial war criminals, but just random people. And this does indicate that the propaganda was at least somewhat successful. Corrin was certain that the vast majority of people heading out firmly believed that the rebels would steal their wealth, dispossess them of their treasures, defile their sons and daughters, torture, maim, and kill resistors, and commit any number of other crimes against them. He didn't think plunder and raping were foremost in the minds of most rebels, but here at the core of the empire, the beliefs and lies used by the emperor to justify his dictatorship ran deep among some folk. Another thing to note is that the Galactic Museum had existed for over 10,000 years as a legitimate institution before being perverted by the empire. There was thus a stable foundation and a degree of credibility associated with the lies spread by the empire. So I think that's an interesting insight into the Empire's propaganda efforts, but I'd love to hear what you think. Today's question of the day comes from Joey Kirkpatrick, who asked me to put the quarians from Mass Effect against the CIS from Star Wars. The main problem when putting Mass Effect against some of the other universes on my list is just the difference in scale. Mass Effect, though still fairly fantastic, is a bit more hard science fiction than, say, Star Wars or Halo. The CIS had perhaps trillions upon trillions of droids, while the quarians had a single fleet by the time of the Mass Effect series. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if you guys have anything you'd like me to address by using the hashtag AskEck and leaving a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.